Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the first section of International Virtual Seminar on the Wood Pulp and Biorefinery of the Federal University of Viçosa. I would like to thank to LCP team for inviting me as an ingress student. It is, a, it is a responsibility and a pleasure to collaborate with this event. Uh, I wish you, you have a great time during these days. Uh, laboratory pop and paper uh, organized very interesting lectures talking about actual and important topics with highly qualified people from different parts of the world. To open the event, our first speaker is Dr. Omid Ramizani. He is an assistant professor of Shahid Behistish University, SBU, in, from Tehran, Iran. And the, his research interests are paper recycling and all aspects of bio-based polymer synthesis and characterization of it in the last 11 years. Dr. Ramezani, welcome. Be free to start your presentation. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Dalton. Thank you. Thanks for the introduction. It's uh, also a pleasure for me for, to be here. I also say hello to all uh, participants of this webinar. I thank for the people who the organizer, I mean, especially the University of Bissosa, and also the people who made all these organizations during this time. So I thank Dalton for the brief introduction, but uh, I would like to take a time to also to add some more points to this uh, brief introduction that Dalton had. Uh, as he said, I am assistant professor of university in Iran, uh, located in Tehran with a campus also near to Tehran called Zero Campus. Uh, we have a faculty of new technologies engineering and in this faculty, we have a small group of biorefinery department. Of course, it used to be a cellulose and paper technology department, but you all know lots of things changed and lots of the names has changed recently. So. Biorefinery is a new coming name after this pulp and paper. So lots of forest products, uh, faculties, lots of forest products, schools uh, all over the world, I think globally, they have mm -hmm. changed their missions, they have changed their names, and we also did this. We, named, we changed the, the name of our department to Biorefinery. And also Shahid PhD University, it has been the former National University of Iran. And uh, uh, I have been working in this university for the last 11 years. And, and uh, well, I have been also working in this paper recycling, my uh, uh, exciting subject. I like it very much the subject. I will explain you why. And also, uh, besides this paper recycling, I have uh, taught other courses uh, related to pulp and paper in this faculty of new technologies engineering. Today, I would like to talk about, uh, I have chosen a, a name, recent topics in paper recycling. So let's get through it and see what happens. I think we have got time for questions. I think we have got time for discussions. So I will just give an outline of what I'm going to talk today. First of all, uh, I have choose the first subject, the need for new sorting techniques of waste paper. The second is customized guideline for the procurement and quality control of recycled paper. The third is upgrading strategies unit operation. I will go, I will get through and I will go through this unit operation. I'm in the concepts and I will particularly uh, talk about uh, a, a unit, a, a type of unit operation. 
The next is the emerging application potentials of paper for recycling and return of used wet and chemicals back to, back to paper making. There is a question, why these topics? Uh, first of all, I would like to say that uh, I was been suggested that I have this pleasure to present this lecture for you. I was thinking of several things. So the first was to go through to discuss a specific subject that I am working on and I have worked on. But uh, after thinking, I prefer to use a subject which is uh, both locally concerned in our country and also is globally concerned. So I have doing some type of types of experiments in our lab with my students and the subjects are wide as written here. You can see that uh, there are different types of subjects from different parts of paper cycling system subject. So the uh, subjects are mostly of our locally concerned subjects. I mean, in a country, in our country. Also globally, I have checked that they have the same discussions, ongoing projects and research projects about the subjects. The second thing I require to add is that uh, I prefer not to go in detail. So uh, whenever you have a question, you can ask me in the question part. So I'm introducing the subjects uh, somehow, I can say briefly, I will explain also briefly about the ongoing project in our lab, but I'm, I'm telling you that if you have got a question, you can go in detail and at the end of the session and we can discuss with each other. So feel free to ask whatever you like uh, related to these topics. Okay, let's go to the first thing. Before going to this part, before going to start, what you saw in the last uh, slide is was I said several things, several uh, terms I used. I used waste paper, recycled fiber, recycled paper, recovered paper, you see. And uh, so what I can say is that, you know, these terms, the whole this term, related to material recycling in paper and board industry is in chaos. So when you're discussing, when you're giving the statistics related, you will have lots of problem because of this chaos in terms. Nobody knows that which one is correct. Also in our country, that through the time I'm, I'm just explaining, I will, uh, tr through the slides, I will let you know that Okay, so how encountered the same problem? I mean, the chaos in terms uh, and what, how we concluded, how we overtake that, uh, overtook this problem. First of all, uh, you know, this is a thesis in 2015 by Eresti, I think, in uh, Alto University. And uh, he explained what. The, same, the, the first thing that the terms in recycled paper are in chaos. But what I would like to add is that through this presentation, <clears throat> I will use these terms interchangeably. For me, they are all the same, okay? So when I say recovered paper, when I say waste paper, when, when I say recycled paper or recycled, recycled paper, recovered paper, I mean, they're all the same in this presentation. They're, I can uh, I use them interchangeably, but uh, surprisingly in some literatures, uh, these parts are, uh, uh, or these terms are used differently. But uh, to add one thing at the end is that, you know, the European Union, I, I was just checking the, to, you know, the latest publications, they have used another 
uh, term that I missed to add here, it, it is paper for recycling. So if you go to the, for example, the new standards coming from the European Union, you will see another term here, paper for recycling, besides this recycled paper cover, paper and all those things. Uh, let's go to this part. The title of this slide is that the need for a new sorting technique. Let's see what it comes from. You know, we have, uh, I'm talking locally, so about our market, as I, as I told you, I choose this topic because of the globally concerned uh, and uh, locally concerned, uh, uh, I can say, uh, worries. By the way, we have uh, lots of different types of recovered paper or paper for recycling, recycled paper, as I said, okay? They are uh, large in volume, they are large in grades, there are variety of types of uh, recycled papers. You have heard about the names. I think, I think, I, th I think, for example, you have heard, heard the name OCC, Old Corrugated Container. Or you have heard the name OMG, Old Magazine Paper. Or for example, you have heard for example, about old newsprint. So we have different types of grades. Also, we have mixed grades. Also, we have, for example, white grades. Also, we have, for example, precisely or carefully separated grades. So when we have got different types of grades, also we have got different volumes. You have changed lots of changes. Uh, you have heard lots of changes in the last I can say 10 years or five years. The policies all, over, all around the world have changed. For example, China has banned uh, the import of recycled paper from states, United States, I mean, and uh, from the European countries. So uh, lots of policies, lots of uh, uh, things have happened. Uh, have happened in the global market of this recycled paper. Together with this great changes, so we have a new uh, necessity for choosing a new sorting technique. Also, you know that when we are talking about the sorting, whatever comes or what first comes to our mind is a um, labor is, is a type of manual sorting, especially in my country, or especially I can say in developing countries. The first thing is the manual sorting they have used, for example, uh, maybe they, are, they, they, they have big plants, but in the same plants, there are several laborers, workers, they're using, they're working, uh, uh, for example, they're working on sorting and separation processes. As you can see in the picture here, uh, a person is just, uh, for example, sorting some, I can say, detrimental substances, uh, on, for example, unwanted uh, materials, for example, uh, uh, some contaminants, I can say, you can see in the pictures. So the first thing when it comes to manual sorting, First, we all know that it's hard, labor intensive, and it is predominantly done all over my country in Iran. So when we, we say, I can add that this type of sorting is not precise enough. I mean, for example, uh, this is not, because this is based on, for example, human errors. You're working on a sorting line. They are you do the, using their hands to separate this contaminants, and for sure, there might be some problems. Uh, there might be some errors. They can discard parts of the contaminants. They can discard parts of this, for example, detrimental substances, and so on. Okay, so there is a need for a type of automated sorting techniques. We have several, several types of automatic, for example, sorting techniques. We have 
different, for example, apparatuses, different devices used. And uh, you can say, you can find lots of literatures related to this automated sorting techniques. But among this automated sorting techniques, what was applicable, what, what was, for example, our preference to use in our lab, we had optical recognition system. So I'm going to talk about the ongoing project in this. Uh, I told you that there, are, there, there is a necessity to use, to use automated sorting techniques because of the more precise results better separation, better sorting, for example, results and consequences. So, and we, I told you also, there are lots of difference, for example, devices, machinery, equipment for this automated. Of course, you know, they are expensive. They are, for example, uh, they might have some special errors. They need some special maintenances, by the way. We choose, the optical recognition system. There are some uh, advantages related to this optical recognition system. I can say first, they are, for example, precise. They can be controlled remotely. For example, you can use uh, internet and using the internet, you can control this control, you can monitor this controlling system, this, recognition system. You can also do some maintenances. Also, they have got some <clears throat> high resolution or high, uh, I can say, uh, better to say, high resolution results we have. So in our lab, we had the concept that to check how can it be possible to separate the contaminants, unwanted materials, both unwanted papers and unwanted, for example, materials which are not paper. I, I, I mean, for example, uh, missiles, uh, for example, clothes, for example, pieces of woods, everything you can say, pieces of stone, you can, you can find it. So, uh, so one part was to differentiate to fragment between the, this unwanted and wanted materials. And uh, we had several things to check. In our lab, we used the high resolution cameras. We had some cameras. We took the pictures of different types of, for example, contaminants, recycled paper, which is mixed or which is combined not separated from the unwanted materials. So we used uh, MAJ, uh, MAJ uh, I can say software. This is an open source software. You can uh, add some plugins to it. And using the plugins, you can, for example, differentiate between, for example, different colors, between gloss of the materials, between size of the material, between, for example, uh, um, different types of, uh, I can say, ap ap apparent properties, what comes to appearance. And then using this image processing system or image processing software and the plugins you add, you can differentiate between this, of course. To continue this type of project, we need to collaborate with other departments, not only our department, which is uh, working in cellulose and paper. We need to communicate, for example, with computer department. We need to uh, communicate with artificial in intelligence department in our university. Also, we need to uh, communicate and collaborate with mechanical engineering department in our university to have a kind of assembly and apparatus or device to best uh, separate the unwanted materials from the papers. The next. The second part I choose was the guideline for the procurement and quality control, the control of the recycled paper. Okay, you know all, 
Nowadays, we have a type of, for example, subjects called circular economy. It's all over the world. It has been very serious. It has been taken seriously in Europe. You have heard, if you just check it out in the internet, you can see that the circular or bioeconomy is a subject of interest all over the world, especially in Europe. You know that for long, for example, uh, time decades, I can say, or even centuries, the paper industry has been the pioneer of this circular economy because of uh, reusing and recycling a waste, a very, a very known waste, which is paper waste or waste papers. Then because it comes to recycling and reusing, you know, lots of things uh, must come into consideration. You need to think of, for example, I can say you need to be curious enough, you need to think of the some indices, some criteria, how to differentiate and how to characterize this uh, raw materials. First of all, what we have a problem in, in Iran is that there is no specific end of waste decree for, for example, paper and board waste. There is a lack of clear reg regulations. There was a very serious lack of clear regulations. So this was, we have a syndicate in Iran, it's called the pulp and paper syndicate. So they invited me together with other seven people as a team to have a guideline, a specific and new guideline for the procurement. So what was the, what were the driving forces were the same things, lack of waste decree, and also lack of clear regulations. There were very, very, uh, uh, we had very problems between the, for example, buyer and sellers of this waste paper. So there was a, a need for a collective approach, a shared, for example, sector wide, along with the player awareness. You know, when we, it comes to uh, recycled or recovered paper trade, uh, several stakeholders, several players, several, for example, uh, role makers are in this market. For example, buyers or dealers. There are some people who are dealing and who are collecting this type of raw material from the market. And uh, then, for example, there are the uh, consumers of this waste paper, mostly recycling paper in plants. They are using this uh, waste paper, collected waste paper as their raw material. So uh, when it comes to a uh, kind of, when it comes to preparing a guideline, we need to consider or take into account all these players of this big, chain, or I can say uh, supply chain. I mean, there are some dealers, there are some buyers, there are some sellers, and, uh, and among all these sectors, we can uh, just say lots of people are engaged. For example, the managing director of the companies, uh, they're very much concerned about the money they should pay for this uh, waste paper. So when it comes to, for example, dealing, it, it, when it comes to trade, any type of mis disagreement, any type of, for example, incons inconsistency between the results, between the report that the seller gives and the buyer gives or receives, there is a matter of, I can say uh, problem because they cannot come to a consensus. They, they cannot come to an agreement for the money which is going to be changed or transmitted first. So 
this guideline should be shared between the sectors, different sectors. Also, we need to have the awareness of the players. So also this should be taught, trained to the, to the different, for example, people who are, for example, again, working in the companies which are receiving these recycled paper as a raw material. They need to have to some inspection uh, procedures. They need to have some characterization procedures. And because of that, there was a uh, there was an essential need to for I mean again locally for my country to have or to prepare a guideline for the procurement and quality control. That's why we have an ongoing project. We choose a project here with the help of the Sandy case I just mentioned and uh, a group of eight people together with me, I mean. We had, uh, uh, we came together. I was from the university, they were from the dealer side, seller side, buyer side, I mean, I mean the whole of this supply chain. So in that project, we were aiming to prepare and to uh, have a new guideline for procurement. It was very surprisingly, it, it was very surprising that uh, uh, in Iran, there was no specific guideline. There was no specific, even for example, a guideline for simple procedures like uh, measuring moisture content of the recycled paper. So they were, very, very various results from the different parts of the companies or different parts of this uh, recycled paper supply chain of uh, the results for, I told you, simple moisture content. Let's allow, for example, um, unwanted materials, let's allow uh, uh, feelers, let's allow, for example, uh, um, stickies and all those things. By the way, so it took a, about six months that we were in this project. We collected different data and statistics from the plants companies. We discussed with the people, the people in charge, the people, for example, uh, in, in charge of uh, companies' plants and in charge of the sampling, inspection, and quality control. Based on this, and we used uh, several literatures, several publications from different uh, parts of the world, especially I remember that we used the guideline that we had in uh, European Union. They, they had a revised guideline, we used it. And again, surprisingly, we noticed that uh, many parts of that guidelines all around the world are not applicator for our country. So we require to revise, change, thoroughly change the whole <clears throat> guideline and to customize it for our country, for our, uh, for example, uh, local plants. Again, I tell you, when if you require, I would I would go in detail about discussing all the guidelines. I as far as far as I know, uh, uh, many parts of the world they uh, similarly lack clear regulations. I'm not sure that we have a common agreement between the companies. For for example, for. <clears throat> uh, sorry, for characterizing the incoming uh, raw material, the incoming, you know that th there is a big discussion about this guideline, this quality control. You know that when we have the bailed uh, recycled paper or loose recycled paper, we have different types of quality control strategies. And when we have the different types of quality control the strategies for this loose and for this bailed, or apparatuses and devices we have, different types of devices we have, for example, 
for the automatic sampling. So we will have different <clears throat> and the various types of results at the end. But if you were interested to know, I would tell you that what happened in this project, how we, we uh, just we went in details. For example, how to even, how to number, allocate a number to a bail, the incoming bail, how to randomly choose the bails, how to, for example, uh, uh, what, what, what were the limits of the moisture, totally different from what we have all around the world. What were the limits that we reject the whole load of, uh, the whole loaded, the whole sense loaded, for example, uh, uh, vehicle that we received from the company. By the way, if you need, I will explain more, then let's go to the next part. Upgrading strategies and unit operation. Again, uh, you know, that's what, even it comes to unit operation of the paper cycle, and you know that lots of processes come into mind. For example, when it comes for, to unit operation, you know, the refining, you know, left several separation strategies, like, for example, cleaning, like screening, like, for example, deflaking. So the name unit operation in paper recycling, especially, is very complicated and wide especially when it, it is compared to virgin fiber, you know, the virgin paper or virgin pulp. You know that, for example, in paper recycling, due to different contaminants, due to various types of sources of the raw material, I mean the pulp, uh, we need some complicated, some uh, uh, sequences, some complicated sequence of, sequences of uh, machinery and equipment to separate the whole contaminants, unwanted materials from the, the or, uh, from the or from our suitable or desired fibers. But uh, as I explained before, I have chosen some uh, topics in my presentation based on our local concerns and also based on my lab experiments I have been uh, teaching, I have been working recently or in the last 11 years from the very first time which I started working in Shahid Bish University. <clears throat> Sorry. The first is fiber fractionation. You have heard about fiber, you have heard about screening. One of the screening techniques is to characterize or it is to uh, make several fractions of the raw material. When we're talking of uh, separating the incoming raw material to fractions, I mean, for example, uh, for example, we talk about the fibers, we need to think that we have different characteristics relevant to paper making when we are talking about the fibers. You know that the length, wall thickness, fiber strengths, pulp type, I mean pulp origins, when it comes from, is it from non-wood, is it from wood, is it recycled, all the things. Lignin contents, you know that it's very, very different. For example, if it comes from the bleached or unbleached sources, or it's semi-bleached, is it mechanical type of pulp, type of pulp, or is it chemical or semi-chemical or semi-mechanical type of wood, type of pulp, specific surface of the fibers and optical properties. So you see that we have different characteristics that we can think of fractionation. We can use this fractionation technique based on all these properties. But there is a big problem, or we have one problem, that we do not have the machinery, or we do not have at the moment, we do not have the equipment or technologies. Let me check what time it is. Okay, I, have, I, I do not have that much time. And we have different types of 
uh, technologies and machine. We do not have different many types of machineries. They are expensive. Most uh, uh, technically, we cannot have, uh, for example, all this machinery and equipment to differentiate between, for example, wall thickness or fiber strengths. But I know there are lots of researchers the doing or being made or being carried out all or all around all around the world based on this characteristics and properties. You see that when we are talking about, but specifically here, what I'm talking about fiber fractionation, it, it I mean uh, I mean to fragment the fibers into different long fiber and short fiber fragments. So we have another types of problem that, uh, okay, when we had this fragmentation or fractionation and we separated the fibers into different part fragments and into different uh, uh, fractions of long fiber and short fiber, what, so the question is that what's the use of it? What we are going to use uh, this long fibers, you need to take into account, you need to consider that paper making potential of pure short or long fiber fractions has several shortcomings. So this is useless. And uh, also you need to consider that when we are talking about the fractionation, we had, uh, we most often, we use this fractions for producing multiply boards or in multiply board applications. So I would like to explain a little, bit, a little bit about the ongoing project. I told that there is a potential for fiber fractionation, but the question is that, uh, what's the use of this fractionation when we have this, uh, uh, when we have this hypothesis, when we have this theory that the pure short, fiber and pure long fibers are useless. Of, of course, uh, uh, there is, I told you, there was uh, an exception for multiply board applications. Uh, what we studied in our lab together with my students and uh, I can say it has, it was accomplished. It's not an, a type of ongoing project, but since the concept is interesting for me also, and I think for some students of me, so I just made, I just said that this is a, a type of ongoing project. We require to think of a new strategy when we separate the whole pulp into different fractions of short and long fibers. So there is a need to think of a new strategies, how to uh, treat, how to process this new separated type of uh, pulp. You know that when you have long fiber and short fibers separated, uh, you will save energy. For example, it is not required to define the short fiber fraction. You will, for example, save time because the amount of the pod which is going to be preceded, which is going to be processed, uh, is decreased drastically, I can say uh, considerably. So when we are talking about the strategy, we need to think that when we have these two separated types of, I told you there are some benefits in, in, in case of the energy. So when we separate this part, we need to think of the new strategies. I have written here blending surface modification like LBL, use, use of industrial enzymes and etc. cetera. Uh, I'm just giving you an example of the project done in, in our part. Uh, we understood that in one of the projects that if we modify the surface properties of these separated fractions, I mean the short fraction and long fraction, uh, 
uh, with some chemicals. If you use, for example, layer by layer techniques, technique, for example, LBL, I have written here. If we understood that if we use LBL technique, for example, to modify the surface of the fibers, for example, using cationic or anionic chemicals, and then after this chemical modification, we mixed these two separated fractions, the results are very, for example, promising, I can say. Uh, we had many uh, the good results of uh, strength improvement. We had very satisfactory results of, uh, uh, I can say, some physical improvement. So if, in, if fractionation can be a kind of good strategy in other types of paper, waste papers, other than this multiply board, if we take a good strategy, what we choose in our lab was surface modification of these different fractions. And what we reached was, was some good results. I'll go to the next uh, presentation, the next slide. So the type, let me get back to this. The emerging application potentials of potentials of the paper for recycling. This is of my special interest. I'm now doing this project. I like it very much. We have lack of wood resources in our country. We do not have that much, for example, uh, possibilities to uh, use forest trees for paper making and uh, recently, we had a law regulation in our country um, imposed by environmental uh, office or environmental ministry, I can say, no office is better to say, that uh, for the next 10 years, uh, no harvesting of uranium forest should be done. And uh, they have chosen a name, the rest, uh, resting time, I can say resting time for the forest, 10 years resting time for the forest. So you can see that we have a big shortcomings of the raw material, if we consider it wood. We do not have good technologies for using non-wood resources. We have wheat straw, we have bagasse, we have uh, rice straw, but you know, because of lots of problems related to non-wood, that, that this is not the scope of this slide to explain. We do not use, uh, we do not have the potential to use that non-wood for paper making. Of course, the gas is used uh, in only one company run by the way, but non-wood is not. So a very promising biomass for paper making is uh, recycled paper or waste paper. But there is a question. This is my question, the question of my research. Do recycled papers have the potential of producing higher value added products other than paper? We all know conventionally, traditionally, recycled paper is used for making paper. So there is a big question here that, uh, can we think of other value-added products other than paper? Uh, we have many types of products <clears throat> made of cellul cellulosic fibers. And uh, there is a big demand for fiber sources uh, of high price. You know that, for example, if you use cotton, if you use, for example, uh, cotton, cotton is in high price in our country. Or if we think of the soft wood resources, we have some ecological problems of growing this type of raw material, this type of woods in Iran. The, the climate in Iran is not suitable for growing soft woods. <clears throat> so 
many of these resources which are used for making some value added products of uh, our industry, I mean cellulose industry, for example, um, uh, for example, for example, derivatives, uh, dissolving pulp, uh, are, uh, are so they, they have the missing raw material, required raw material. But before going to this part to discuss this, let's see how recycled fibers differentiate from the virgin fibers. You know that there are lots of publications they have heard about lots of differences about this between recycled fibers and uh, virgin fibers, but you have heard the most common term, and this is hornification. It's uh, the term that came to the industry in 1960s, 1969, I think, by Jamie. Uh, and uh, after that time, lots of people, lots of researchers have worked on this hornification. Some people, they say, it's uh, they define it as the loss of bond, bonding between the fibers. Some be, people they say the increase of crystal crystalline crystal, uh, crystalline part of the fibers. Some people they say, for example, is the lack of hemicellulose. Some people they say that it's a, a irreversible type of pore closure. Some people they say, for example, the decrease of the, 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 the reluctant uh, property of the paper fibers to reabsorb the butter. So this is, and then we have the strength properties. So what we have in recycled papers, uh, fibers, especially the chemical type of fibers, they experience this harnification and a strength decrease uh, during recycling. Other, other concern is that the fiber lengths. You have heard that uh, when, we go, when we go to recycling sequences, and especially with, when the, this recycling sequences exceed, for example, four times, we have this hornification together with decrease or substantial decrease of fiber lengths. Also, we have some issues with degree of polymerization. We all know that the degree of the polymerization or DP or the viscosity of the recycled fibers are less than virgin fibers. So when it comes to thinking of, uh, let me, uh, when it comes to thinking of uh, using this recycled fiber for value-added products, these two concerns come to our mind. But when does this subject introduced by me, I mean, potential potentials of paper for recycling or recycled fibers, some emerging application potentials, I meant that, I meant that there was an opportunity for low and mixed grades uh, of the recycled paper. This low and mixed grades, they have experienced several processing history. I mean, drawing, pressing, uh, being pumped from, for example, refining all the things. And uh, so they have inferior type of properties. Also, when we co it comes to mixed grades, we know that this is sub another inferior property grade. So, and also we have short fibers, we have low DPs. So there is an opportunity for this. But what's the problem here? Why we say that, okay, we all know that there is an opportunity for low grade recycled fibers. We all know that, for example, uh, there is a problem with the, the short fibers. Uh, so why we do not use, why we do not use uh, this recycled sources as a potential uh, uh, as as the raw material for some value-added products. I'm just saying that this dissolving pulp cellulose derivatives 
uh, cellulose fibers, nanofibers, and all those things, they are all uh, emerging applications. You know that about nanocellulose, both nanocrystalline cellulose uh, or microfibrillated cellulose, as you have different things. So this raw material can be used for preparation of this new emerging material or products. Cellulose derivatives, you have heard about esters, you have heard about ethers of cell cellulose. So we have many potential for this, also for dissolving pulp. Uh, there's a big question, can we use this recycled, especially the low grade grades or inferior grades for producing these materials, this, emer this uh, emerging material, dissolving pulp, cellular derivatives, nanofibers. The question is that the problem I ask is the purity and homogeneity. When we say homogeneity and purity, this is very obvious about the recycled papers. You know that we have uh, the purity problem. It, we have origins, different origins. We have different materials, contaminants inside. And uh, both, I mean, origins and contaminants unwanted materials, the impurities and uh, lack of homogeneity of these fibers. Thinking of this problem, in our lab, we made some uh, type of uh, studies. Well, uh, and this is an ongoing study. I, one of my students is still working on this problem. You know, we had, we took the OCC as the first raw material. Then we used several purification steps. Why we use it? it uh, one of the grades of the recycled paper, which is mm, uh, collected efficiently in Iran and in large amounts in OCC, because we have abundant, abundant, I can say abundant, uh, recycling plants, more than 200, 250 plants all, all around Iran. They are converting this raw material waste paper to recycled paper or to new packaging paper. And the very first raw material of these companies is the OCC. So it was very easy to collect and it was available. Uh, available. So we choose, we selected OCC as the raw material. You know that when we say OCC, OCC, it's unbleached grade. It has not been uh, experienced, the bleaching sequences. That's why we require some uh, purification steps. We require to remove lignin. We require to remove hemicelluloses. And we require to make it, make, for example, to eliminate, to eradicate the extremes. I mean, we need to make it homogen and to add more homogeneity to this raw material. In the first part of the project, or in the first project but one of my students, we accomplished, we were successful in eliminating, for example, lignin, hemicellulose, and we, we reached some uh, desirable results in case of this. But we failed to eliminate, we failed to uh, eradicate, I can't say, to remove the fillers. And you know that when it comes to uh, cellulose derivatives, we need to maintain as much as low possible the amount of the fillers. Okay, needless to say, they can be calcium carbonate, they can be clays, they can be bentonite, they can be uh, talc, they can be several types of uh, 
fillers we, we, which we use in paper industry for improvement of printability, for improvement of the wet end uh, processing, and all those things. In this, kind of, in this project, which I have at, the, at, at this time, uh, other than the purification steps we used in the last project to remove lignin, to remove hemicellulose, we are using some um, paper making unit operations, for example, washing, for example, cleaning, for example, uh, fractionation. Even we are using flotations to remove the fillers. And we are just studying the potentials of all these unit operations uh, to remove. Also, we have some chemical approaches. Now we have, for example, we are using uh, pH reduction as a kind of strategy. We are uh, using acid washing as a kind of, again, another type of chemical strategy. I will discuss, if you like, in the question part. So, part. So, I am going to present the last slide and uh, which is return of used wet end chemicals back to the paper making. Another recent topic in paper so I can I choose. This is again uh, I, this is again a topic I like it very much. You know that when it comes to paper making we use a variety of chemicals, various type of different chemicals we use in paper making. Uh, and we call it, for example, wet end chemicals. We use, for example, uh, retention aids as chemicals. We use uh, uh, dry strengths and wet strengths agents. We use uh, fillers. We use uh, many different types. It, uh, cationic, for example, uh, drainage improvements, deformers, lots of different chemicals. And this makes the wet end chemical of the paper machine or wet end of the paper machine a very complicated type. Also, there are some potential insights. How? You know that wet end chemicals in paper making worse much more than fibers. This is a very specific object. At least you know that when it comes to starch and cationic starch, the price of this starch it at least two times the, the process of the, the, the price of the fibers. So there is a good potential opportunity if we are able to recover these chemicals from these uh, uh, cycles of the paper making. I mean the effluent wastewater of the paper uh, recycled fiber making and so there is a potential. Uh, I told you, recovery of this chemical sounds reasonable. Not only reasonable for me, it's uh, interesting. It's money-making type of strategy. Let's check. I was just checking out the website of the CTP, which is a center for paper making in, uh, I think in, Mm, yeah, in southern part of the France, I have been there. Of course, not the CTP, the Grenoble, the neighboring uh, department. In that department, the CTP, I found this type of uh, study. They have studied the amount of starch in different uh, sections of uh, recycling paper operation. You can see that in the pulp outlets, when we are talking in the first part, uh, pulping part, in the pulp pulper outlet, the concentration of the starch, it's near to one gram per liter of the wastewater, of the processed water. So there is a big potential to study that if we can start, we can separate the starch in this process. The ongoing project in our center was to study the possibility of to separate, the possibility to separate this starch from the effluent. So first of the part of the project, we need to be 
confident. We need to be sure that we have separated as much as possible of the starch from the uh, fibers. You know that cationic type of chemicals are interested to be attached with the fibers. But, uh, um, and uh, we need to get sure to separate them from the album. Of course, I need to add that there is another, uh, uh, there is another necessity to uh, separate these chemicals from the uh, process water of the pelvic marking. Another, another problem is that they keep them remained uh, in the process water. They will add uh, COD, BOD, I mean environmental concerns. Also, the, they are the origins or they derive some carboxylic acids, some acidic, they uh, impart a kind of acidic uh, property to the pro to the process water which is corrosive which is uh, which makes for example the uh, equipment eroded or uh, uh, which is not good for the machinery okay let's go to the ongoing project i told you the first part of the project was that to get ensured that the whole starch which is attached to the fibers are separated so we need, need to use type of chemicals. Mostly what we were using, and also, also we have, uh, the, uh, according to the literatures we studied, we used enzymes. You know, one of the common enzymes, if we get through the uh, starch, this amylose, amylose enzyme. When you use the amylose, amylose has the potential to uh, weaken the attachment or the bonding of the starch to the fibers. And then we get assured that this starch has come to, to the process water. Then in the process water, we have the fraction of the fibers, the water, and the starch, the dissolved starch. In the next part, we need to separate this dissolved uh, starch or this suspended starch in the process water from the first part using uh, the different devices, thickening devices, for example, the watering devices like screw presses, like for example, uh, simple screening in the lab, or for example, uh, uh, other uh, present uh, machinery. Uh, the same, separated chemicals, I mean the starch can be used again for paper making. The same opportunity ex exists for fillers, for, for example, the region chain A's like AKD, like uh, CPAM or cationic polyacrylamide and all those things. Again, if you have a question about these things, I would be, it would be a pleasure for me to discuss with you after this uh, presentation. I hope it was helpful for you. At the end, I am really feeling a little bit tired. <laughs> I don't know why. Okay, so thanks for the attention. Uh, please feel free to ask any question you like. Thank you. Uh, Bruno, are you there? I don't yes, know. Okay. Dr. Ramizani, we are here. Thank you. Uh, it's better to say Omid. It's, I think it's easier Omid. for you to pronounce. Okay. Thank you. Thanks also. Oh, congratulations for your presentation. Okay, I think it, it took the same. Okay, it, it was one hour as scheduled. Yes, yes it's okay. Thank With you very much. About, about time is okay. Uh, Thank you. Congratulations. Uh, we had um, a lot of questions here. I've tried to to separate for topics to help you. And uh, uh, a brief uh, uh, commentary is recycling material involves different science areas of knowledge. Besides yeah. technology, we could realize the importance to care people that work separating materials 
and the, the necessity to for more clear and the, uh, specific regulations to 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 indicate the better end use and their limits. Uh, it's clear in your presentation. Also, you we, we could to see uh, the amount of projects that you conduct in your in your center. It's amazing to see how we can uh, uh, use the, the, that material, recycled material. After to see your presentation, uh, I could uh, confirm how technology and science can contribute for life quality and sustainability. Mm. Uh, congratulations. And uh, now I have a question for from uh, Priscila Moreira from UFV Vissosa, Brazil. Uh, thanks for your lecture. Uh, how many times can be fiber reused without drastically losing its properties? Uh, uh, what was Pri Prisla? Prisla, the Priscilla? name. I'm yes. Priscila. Okay. Okay. Uh, hi, Priscila. Thanks for the question. Uh, before this, answering this question, Dalton, uh, how can I know that how many people were part participated in this session? Let how me check with I... Bruna. Bruna, you can uh, answer. Quantas pessoas estão? How many people? I will check here for you. Oh. No, okay, okay, good. Uh, because I, I wanted to, to just guess uh, what type of participants we have. But I know Priscilla is a student. And yes, uh, uh, yeah. uh, she, yes? Yes. Correct, she. Yes. Yeah. She asked a question about the uh, how many times can a, a, a fiber can be recycled. First, to explain to you, Priscilla, you know that if you just get through the literatures, if you just searched Google, for example, these two terms, never dried, once dried fibers, okay? You will, you will find lots of different uh, literatures and research projects related with this name, never dried and once dried. Why is this term important? Because, we know, we know that the first cycle of recycling, uh, there is a potential to lose lots of uh, strengths, you know, more drastically than the other sequences. We lose the uh, strength properties of the fiber, especially the chemical fibers I'm adding, okay? So then we say once dried and never dried, there are many differences between this never dried and once dried. And when we say once, it means many uh, parts of the properties, especially uh, the strength properties, are decreased in the first cycle. But after uh, I, I explained to you, for example, hornification, I explained to you about the loss of uh, bonding capacity. Uh, bonding capacity between the fibers, I explained this. But uh, theoretically, when we talk about, for example, uh, number of the sequences, we can say at most, at most seven uh, sequences of the recycling. But this is not necessarily correct, I can say. I can say, for example, when you are asking me how many times, and I answer seven times, it's not precise enough. It's not correct enough. We need to ask that what for what purposes? As I explained to you, when it comes to DP, we, you all know that we have a level of DP. I mean, the amount of the DP of the cellulose fibers that uh, there is no lower value than that. There is no lower uh, amount than, than that. So this is the level of type of, uh, when it comes to uh, lengths of the fibers, this is something else. When it comes to crystalline and amorph, there are uh, the parts of the 
cellulose, this is other thing. When it comes to strength properties, it's, it's other thing. But uh, just roughly talking, we can say four to seven times is the most uh, uh, possible sequences for fibers not to lose their potential for paper making. Yes. Omid, your presentation is a success because I have a lot of questions for you here. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good people to hear. very interested. Uh, we have around 100 people listening right now. Uh, good. People good. from Brazil, Finland, India, USA, Argentina, Iran, and Portugal. Oh, okay, good. Part of the world. It's nice. Good, good. Yeah. Nice to hear that. Nice to hear that. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> uh, okay. I have an I have another question from uh, Mr. Felipe Perdesoli from Lensing. It's a company in Brazil. What about Lensing? Lensing. No, I know Lensing. Yeah. Lensing. Uh, what about the carbon footprinting of its recycling process? Any idea of how much carbon can be saved? <laughs> Okay, hi Flippy. Thanks for the question and thanks for watching. Uh, you know, when it comes to environmental concerns, you know that I told you a circular economy or bioeconomy is a subject of interest in the recent years, in the last five years. All around the world are talking about circular economy. I mean, we need to be successful in re reusing our uh, resources. We need to be successful uh, in reusing our, especially wastes. So when it comes to paper, there is a type of uh, raw material which is abundant, easily collected, easily sorted. Not easily, of course I explained, but. Okay, it's easily sorted. And uh, so it's environmentally friendly type of material. When it comes to paper makings and carbon footprint, you have heard lots of things. Again, they are not pre precise. They are not, for example, they're just a type of approximate type of talking. For example, they say, if you recycle one tone of uh, waste paper, it equals uh, uh, saving 17 trees. Okay, so you know that when it comes to calculation, you need to, for example, calculate uh, how many, what is the diameter of that uh, timber, uh, for, or for example, the diameter of that log, how to calculate what is the length, what is the height, uh, and this is it. But, but, but you're right, yes. Uh, again, there are I can say that this paper recycling, okay, is a type of environmentally friendly approach, a pioneer in bio-based economy. And uh, if you consider my presentation that we have, we can use some value-added products, we can make some value-added products out of this biomass. So this type of uh, carbon uh, footprint uh, benefits will get doubled. How, for example, you are talk we are talking about, for example, uh, cellulose derivatives. We talk about viscose, we talk about Ryan, uh, artificial fibers, I mean, okay, or regener regenerated fibers, better to say. Do you know that when it comes to uh, uh, viscose production, it's uh, environmentally polluting type of industry. Lots of pollutions are related to this, okay? So uh, when it comes to uh, recycled fibers at the new sources, at least you, had, you have eliminated, you have discarded, you have saved uh, pulping processes, which use many chemicals, which use, for example, many energy, which use uh, lots of energy, I mean, which use many things, okay? so. Uh, I can say, Philippi, uh, if we consider the potentials, the promising, the 
ongoing potentials of the recycled fibers, the carbon footprints of the paper recycling will get doubled. I hope that I answered your question. Thanks again for asking. Okay. Okay. Uh, I will try to connect two questions about separate materials. It's from Mitra Satapati and Paulo Campos. They are question uh, about uh, uh, how to differentiate the short and long fibers in paper making and what process has been used to separate plastic and aluminum? Okay, um, Mitra, it, 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 come, it, it, it seems to me that Mitra is Iranian because it's one of the famous Iranian names, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Buzz Balo, Bud Balo Combos, I don't know Balo Combos, uh, what name it is, but- Always from uh, Brazil. Oh, okay, 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 good, good to tell, good, good. Thank you. Okay, both of you, thanks for asking the question. Thanks for, again for watching. It was very good opportunity. I liked it, Dalton. Yes. Okay, yes. I liked for it. Me too, for me too, for me too. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, when it comes to fragmentation, differentiation, or separating the materials, contaminants from the recycled fibers, you need to consider this strategy is based on the properties, physical properties of the contaminants and the fibers. You know that contaminants and the fibers are different in density. For example, if we are talking about the density of the cellulose fibers, uh, it's not more than two. I, I, think, I think exactly is 1.5 uh, gram per cubic centimeter, okay? so. So the density is not more than two, but when it comes to stone, if it comes to metals, you need you, you uh, we can expect uh, much more densities. For example, more than three, more than five, two point seven. We have uh, not not more than five, I think. But for example, for metal, for for iron, I know that is two point seven. I'm not sure, but it. The density is 2.7 uh, gram per cubic centimeter. So when it comes to fractionation and differentiation between the uh, fibers and contaminants, you need to consider different characteristics, properties. First, I told you size. You know that we have different sizes. Then density, surface properties, and uh, uh, Many things, anything I can say. For example, flexibility as a kind of physical property, they're all. Uh, if we consider density, then cleaning part or cleaners are for density. If we consider size, screening is for size. If we consider for surface process, properties, fl flotation process is for surface properties. You know, for example, you can separate uh, ink, and tuners from the fibers uh, using the surface properties. One is hydro hydrophobic and one is hydrophilic. So this is a type of surface properties you, you use. So Mitra and Balo Combos, you, I just tell you that based on the physical properties, you can choose different approaches and machinery and equipment. Thanks for asking again. Nice, nice. Thank nice. you. Uh, Omid, I have two more here. I will try to connect. It's about uh, from Maria Teresa from Viçosa and Felipe again uh, from Lansing, both from Brazil. Uh, okay. now, uh, nowadays, is there any? Uh, you talked about additives né, in your in the end of your presentation, cationic and starch, né, uh, that are used specifically on the recyclated fiber to improve the paper production and paper pro properties. And Felipe asked again about tendencies for the inking process. If you have some. Uh, uh, comments about the inking. Okay, uh, 
uh, what specifically he asked about the DNK? Uh, because there are lots of things to say to talk about the inking. But new, the, ten, uh, new tenants about the inking. What is the new ben about benefits? Maybe what are you doing for in increase or improve the inking in the system? Uh -huh, okay, okay. Are okay. you using I, I just... additives or technology equipment? Okay. Uh, you know, uh, thanks, Maria. And thanks, Felipe. Thanks for the questions. Uh, the last uh, slide I used, I just let me sh show you here. I meant something else. Uh, I uh, am worried that there is a misunderstanding in, in this here. Let me, let me explain. In this slide, I meant to say that uh, there are some chemicals in this water streams of paper recycling, paper making, that uh, they have the potential to be recovered, potential to be recycled, and potential to be reused. So when it comes to cationic polymers, when it comes to, for example, retentionates, when it comes to wet strengths and dry strengths uh, materials or chemicals, I wanted to emphasize and to just point that this type of uh, chemicals and uh, prop, uh, agents are, have the potential to be recycled. This was what I meant here. For sure. Okay, now asking your question. For sure, in a flotation process, we use many types of chemicals. And uh, we, have, we have many strategies to improve the separation of the fibers and inks in flotation cells. And uh, you know that even we have some inks, which are, for example, uh, which can be seen in this process, I mean flotation cell. The first question related to my slide, uh, is there any potential to recycle the flotation cell chemicals? I'm not sure. It, it needs to be studied because the amount is very low in the flotation process in unit operation because what we use, for example, soaps, we use the surfactants, we use, for example, chemicals like for example, fillers, we use, for example, pH improvement chemicals, we use, uh, we use different chemicals, but the amounts are not that much enough to think of the recycling. They're so related to re recovering these chemicals. But related to what you ask about the chemicals, how to improve, you know that, for example, if you control the a concentration of the calcium ion. This is a type of improvement. If you use, I'm talking about the type of the ongoing project. If you use a type of new uh, carrier gas, you know, most of them use air as a gas. Or you can use, for example, oxygen. You can use carbon dioxide as a carrier gas in flotation cells. You can use, for example, nitrogen. So there is a, a type of ongoing, it can be, because when it comes to surface properties, changing the different type of gases makes the uh, recovery of the, or makes the separation of the uh, ink tuners and fibers improved. So I hope I answered your question. But I, if there was a misunderstanding for me, you can ask more both Maria Perez and Felipe, thanks. Okay, Yomid. Yomid, I don't have uh, more questions here. Uh, I would like to say to you, it was amazing to meet you uh, in this morning here in Brazil. I, maybe here is in the night, for us is the morning. <laughs> yeah, now it's afternoon here. It's, it's afternoon. Uh, now it's, Yes, it's uh, 6 p.m., oh. 7 p.m. Now it's exactly 7 p.m. in the afternoon. 
It's nice. It's, it's, it's amazing what Vsoza is doing to connect uh, researchers in sure. I like this. parts of the world. Yes, in this moment, we can't uh, travel or, or movie in the, in, uh, uh, around the world, but the uh, internet and technology is helping yes, us exactly. to, to keep the connection, to share research. And for me, it was amazing to meet you. Uh, thank you, you again to LCP team to, to, for this moment to seminar. It was amazing. And now I will, uh, I will give you a time to say uh, bye for people and finish in our event for this morning. Oh, I have just one more uh, bef bef before you. I have just one, one comment there. Uh, for, for, for people, uh, uh, to all participants, don't forget to fill out the attendance list available on YouTube. It is important to create a certificate in the end of the event for participants. Okay, Amir, feel free to be. Okay, uh, Dalton, thank you very much. I also thank the organizers. I do not know the exact names, but uh, I have been uh, contacted by Bruna and by... Ana Marcia, Filippi. Uh, no, also Filippi uh, and, and, and other... Uh, Ana Marcia, uh, Yara. Uh, Yara, Ana Marcia. Mm, I Bruno. finished... <laughs> I finished. Dimo, Dimor, what was you say? Dimoro? Dimoro? Demoné. Demoné. Ah, Demoné, I think. Yara Demoné, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I thank both of them. And I thank Vsoza uh, University. It was very nice. Uh, I have also, it was very, very amazing for me that internet makes all these, these things available. Also, one wish that we all wish is that this coronavirus get disappeared soon, as much as soon as possible. And uh, uh, I wanted at the end to add that uh, after this thanking for your participation and thanking for attention of this, I, uh, I would like to add something more that I like your country very much. I like Brazil very much. Okay, this is, I don't know, but I, I, as far as I remember, I have been uh, fascinated by lots of the uh, exciting things there. I hope you get safe, your country gets safe out of this virus, also mine. And I, I also hope to have the opportunity once to visit your country. I like it very much. Okay, okay. thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Dr. Thanks all. Thank you for everybody, and see you at uh, 2 p.m. Uh, Br uh, Brazil local time. Thank you so much. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Have a good time. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. bye.